I got a whole new box of colors. So exciting. New color. So I have a couple of fairy houses. We're gonna test out these new colors on as well as a couple of mugs. And, um, you know, just kind of see how it goes. You and me, babe. You and me, babe. It's just nothing else like you. We're ready to go. And I'm very excited. I got another purple, a couple more greens, some uh, pink. Yeah, good stuff. Really good stuff. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I just realized that that entire time I was painting this little guy, I thought I was time lapsing and I wasn't. He's very cute. He has peach, he has flame red, he has leaf green. Isn't he cute? Love it. And while I was painting him, I knocked this one over. So these two little flat, uh, little leaves need to be pasted, Daddy. Paste it. They need to be pasted. So got my paper slip. Paper slip, if you don't know already. Paper slip is paper and slip. It's not rocket science, but paper and slip. When you put paper into the slip, little paper fibers help to hang on to the, um, to the leather hard. Or Bisquare, you can do this with Bisquare too. I have, I have a video on that. And you can just glue things like this back together. Without any problems at all. Ta-da! Good as new. I'm gonna let that kind of settle in there. It is not going anywhere. I'm gonna let that settle in and then I'm gonna take this tool and I'm going to kind of redraw some of those lines. Did I say I was gonna let this settle in? Because that is clearly not what I'm doing. This little piece goes right there. So we're gonna do the same thing to him. a lot of stuff and it looks like this paper slip is made with dryer lint. Dryer lint is a lot more accessible when you're in your laundry room which I am.
All better. And this little guy is going to get teal leaves, mandarin orange flowers, saffron centers, amethyst windows. That is what we're doing. I've got blue frost and I've got avocado on this one. So the avocado, the carmine, the avocado is the leaves and the carmine is the, and then the blue frost is the doors and windows. So that's fantastic for that one. For this one, very cute. We have flame red, uh, leaf green. So this is the red, this is the green. And then peach. Peach for the door. Oh, I didn't get his doorknob painted. His doorknob needs painting. And then for this one, I have mandarin orange. Grandmother always had um, marigolds. And so I thought this kind of looked like marigolds. And so it is mandarin orange. And uh, the saffron yellow, saffron yellow in the center and on the doors, and teal for the leaves, because why not? So, uh, so these will get bisked uh, before they're fired. They're not bisked yet. One thing I did think, I let them dry all the way out before painting them, which I've never done before. I think I might like that better, but really, I think it's just easier to paint them in the bisque stage than in the raw stage altogether. Um, but I'm going to keep experimenting with that. What do you like? Do you have a preference as to whether or not you paint on your underglaze at leather hard, at bone dry, or at bisque? Let a girl know, man. Share the wealth. So the last two colors are, are these. Um, here, I'm gonna do them in, uh, in actual on the best mugs. And this is soft pink. And this is royal purple. So the pink and purple are going on these mugs. And um then these will get a decal on them as well so the pink that i've been using uh the straight up pink is absolutely gorgeous on the buff clay the brown clay oh my gosh it is stunning but on the b mix it kind of has an orangey tint so i'm really hoping that this will give softer pink <laughs> soft pink uh but i'm trying this out on a b mix uh mug so we'll have a pink and a purple mug with the underglaze transfers on them
Okay, that pretty much wraps it up. These will likely be in the next kiln of. This one and this a beautiful darling will be in the next kiln load. Um, but these have not yet been bisked. So these will not be in the next kiln load. They will be in the kiln load after the next kiln load. And I'm hoping to have a kiln load full of these little guys. But I got a lot to work to do. <laughs> Uh, but that's okay. I love doing it. <laughs> okay, so this is Future Me, and I was just editing uh, past me's video, and it just so happens, as God would have it, that I'm unloading the kiln today. <laughs> And the kiln has these colors in it. It's great, huh? Okay, so this did not come. This is an old one. And this is a new one. This is yellow, speedball yellow. And this is saffron yellow. Okay? So the fairy house that had the saffron yellow on it has not been fired yet. But I did do this piece in saffron yellow. So that's the difference in the yellows. Okay? Then purple-wise, this is deep purple. It's almost black. Um, and this one got a little hot. This one got all the way up to seven as far as my witness cones say. Well, here we go. This is the difference between violet and the new royal purple. So this is royal purple. And um, I love it. It's fantastic. Um, it will be great for fairy houses and stuff like that. Not so, so sure, you can't hardly see the black on top of it though. So, not so sure it works for this application, but that's okay. Um, and then the other one I got out was uh, the pink. The pink, that is the new pink. This is the old pink, so soft, soft pink. And the, the pink, that I've been using. So this is the new pink, soft pink. This is the pink that I have been using. Now, uh, this here is the regular pink on a dark clay body. And see how I told you, it was yummy. It's fantastic, it's gorgeous on this clay body. This is the same color. This is on B-Mix. This is on the darker clay body. So if you use a brown clay body, all of these colors are gonna look different, but this specifically is the pink on a brown clay body. I don't think I had any um, examples of the others on brown clay body, but you'll see that as you follow the channel because we're gonna switch to brown eventually. Um, I am not sponsored by anybody or anything. So uh, this is just my experience with speedball glazes. I use speedball because um, I've never had any problems with them. Um, they've never bled for me. They have never um, faded. I've had, uh, I've had gla uh, under glazes fade and not have any color in them. And I've had them bleed all over like things that I carved. Um, but I have never had that happen with, um, with speedball glazes. And that's why I use them. I figured out what's causing the crawling and it has nothing to do with the speedball glazes. Um, a little bit has to do with me and a little bit has to do with um, the clear glaze that I've been using. So um, that's, that's why I use the um, speedball and I like it. So thanks for coming everybody. It's been a fun day. <laughs>
note to self, I need an underglaze palette. <laughs> need to be able to see what these things look like once they're fired before I fire them. Ha, 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 ha.